therefore I speak. You understand? What you believe is you speak. If all that we need to do is to hang around with you and we know exactly what you're, where you're coming from. Why? Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're going to say my life is bad, I know your friend is Job. The Job in the Bible. I know that that's your friend. Because you associate yourself with him and think, oh, he suffered, I suffered too. Some Bible theologians tell me, I, I didn't do, do, do the investigation, that the suffering of Job lasted less than a year. So if you're going to go around talking about Job, his, his downfall is only one year. All right, you can verify that. It's not me. I'm just saying it. Now, you don't associate yourself with somebody who had a problem for just one year. And after that, he got a double bonus. He got a double bonus for, of everything except a wife. Two wives, big problem. <laughs> you know that, yeah, two wives. So one was good, but the rest of it was double. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that he and Jesus and, and Peter, of course, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And so the Jesus answered and said to him, simple, simply this, have God faith. Okay, the translation says, have faith in God. No, the actual translation is have God faith. Operate on the God level of faith. Because if you operate on God level of faith, this is not a problem. But I'd like to draw your attention to verse number 20. It says, as they pass by, okay, they saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. Number one, the Bible says, as they passed by. Somebody said, pass by. Your job is not to park at problems. Your job is to pass by. This is your job. Amen. Sometimes if you park, you're in trouble. You're not supposed to park. You need to pass by. That fig tree was a problem maker in the life of Jesus. In that season, Jesus could have probably parked. He says, no, I'm going to pass by because this has not come to stay. It's come to pass. Oh, praise the Lord. Somebody should say a better amen for that. Because everything which is coming in your life is not come to destroy you. It's come to pass by. It's only when you park that you're in trouble. Am I making sense to you? You don't have to park. You need to pass by. Why? I'm looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame. He didn't park at the cross. He moved on. Will you say amen? Oh yeah. The Bible says in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So I had to stop and take a stock of this verse because the Bible says they saw the fig tree. I understand if the Bible says they saw the fig tree dried up, I understand. But they have said here, it is dried up from the roots. Now, how did they do an investigation those days? I don't know whether they dug into it or what, or whether Pete had extra vision, I don't know. But what is written here is this, it dried up from the roots. So in your life and my life, anything which can crop up has two dimensions. One is the seen dimension and the other is the unseen dimension. We are most of the time attacking the seen dimension. When the problem is not the seen dimension, the problem is the unseen one. Will you say amen? So when Jesus spoke the words of power, the Bible says the thing dried up from the roots. Mm, praise the Lord. And it also tells me that now in the morning, verse 20, now in the morning, that means when Jesus spoke it, it, it died. All right? It died. But the manifestation of the death took a little while. This also tells me that when we attack the right root of the problem, don't attack the shoot of the problem. Attack the root of the problem. We are very good at attacking the shoot. Okay? We are attacking people. We think people are a problem. People are not the problem. It's not people. It's the thing which is holding the people. Right? Our great Peter. Jesus one day had an interview. He asked them, who do you say I am? And you know, many people said many things. But Peter, uh, there was a great revelation and he opened his mouth and he said, You are Christ, the son of the living God. And what did Jesus say? Flesh and blood. So there's one dimension. Flesh and blood dimension. And then he said, but this revelation has come from my father, the spirit of my father. Amen. So that's another dimension. And the Bible tells me just not a few verses just down in the same chapter. Our dear friend Peter, after hearing Jesus talk about his death, burial and, and resurrection, he took Jesus aside and he rebuked him, the Bible says. 
And he says, this is not going to happen to you. What did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. One verse, a contrast of great revelation and, 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 and becoming the mouthpiece of Satan in the same chapter. Are you, am I making sense to you today? Hmm. And Peter, the Bible says, it, he saw the, and the, the revelation is, and, the, and he saw the fig tree dry up from the roots. So two dimensions of life. Two dimensions. One of the most dangerous, subtle, I should say, schemes of the devil is to get us to believe that everything we are doing is of natural origin. One of the schemes of the devil. No, when you when you travel, <clears throat> you know territories. Uh, you know you know different kind of territories operate different ways. Okay, there's a certain amount. Of, there's a certain. Uh, I should say, how, how do I put this? There's a certain demon rather on each area, and if you if you see the functionality, it's very unique. Right? If you go to a certain city, it's unique in a very certain way. Very unique. Certain times, lot of temples. You see, certain times. It's a very unique kind of hold the other side side of the world no temples but lifestyle complete lifestyle different different lifestyle you go to another section very religious but again that's a stronghold it's a, it's a different working and when you realize that the enemy we are facing is trying to prove to us that we are living in a very very natural world that's when we are trying to beat at the wrong door or rather knock the wrong door but today as i speak to you if our eyes can be open to see the intricacies of the spirit and where is my origin of my problem, I think you'll be a sharpshooter today. Will you say amen? Amen. Trying to get all of us to be sharpshooters because I'm tired of shooting in the dark and wasting my bullets. Shoot at sight. And that sight needs to be well. All right. Now what? Listen to me very carefully. So, and the Bible says the fig, uh, the, the fig tree dried up from the roots. All right, so let me quickly go to the next. The book of 2 Corinthians, please. Chapter 10 and verse number 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 3. As you're turning there, let me also tell you about an incident which happened. I heard about this incident a couple of uh, months ago from a friend of mine. One of the things that my, my, my friend's friend does, he, he erects this huge dish uh, which picks up signals from you know a satellite and and sends it home. So this particular dish, I got it from a friend because he told me it's, it's got only two channels. And both are Christian channels. We don't have cable at home. Uh, so I, I decided I get this one. Why? Because it's only two Christian channels. Number one, number two. You press number two, it goes to number one. So <laughs> there's nothing more to watch except Christian stuff. So I said, okay. So there's a huge, huge dish. He erected it, he plugged it into my house and I'm getting two Christian channels. Praise God for that. But he was telling me a story about how he had to go to another city in India to fix up this dish. <clears throat> so he has done it before. So he carried all the equipment, fixed this up, and then everything is okay. But when he put on the television, uh, no signal. You know, it's all that black and white stuff. And so he was wondering, he did everything he knew to do. do. I mean, he's done everything perfectly. The numbers are fine, but it is not connecting. What was the problem? So he called his another friend, his, his accomplice in another part of town and said, listen, I've done everything I could do, but no signal. What's the problem? So this guy thought about it. I said, maybe it's a spiritual problem. What well, spiritual problem? Dish, cable, wires, switches, spiritual. Said, okay, give it a shot anyway. Give it a shot. So both of them agreed in prayer and said in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every demon trying to hold these signals. Instantly there was picture. Instantly there was picture. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Now, this is, for some of you, uh, Sandeep is talking weird. All right. And it's okay with you. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I thought the same. But then when I begin to see the, 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 the reality of uh, the spiritual operation, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm very much convinced to say that the devil is at work. He wants to hold the signal. Because once the signal gets through to your home, you know, life gets into your home because the word of God is being preached. So the signal came on instantly and the, and the picture came on and the, uh, life went on as usual. All right. Let's go to the book of uh, Ephesians, please. Uh, no, no, where are we? 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse, let's read from verse number 3. 3, verse 3. Okay. There we go. Can we all read that together, please, at the count of three? One, two, three, let's go. 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Alright? So this is a very strong reminder. Though we walk in the flesh, praise God, all of us we have still have flesh, although you'll be floating somewhere here. <laughs> Alright. So praise the Lord that you still have flesh, right? Because though we walk in the flesh, meaning because uh, though we have a fleshly body, the Bible says we do not war. We do not war. So your flesh rather is not with flesh. Though you are in the flesh, your war is not in the flesh. Many times one of the deceptions of Satan is to get you to war against flesh. Why? Because that's what you see. And it's very easy for us to fight somebody we can see. And not somebody we don't see. You understand that? So we, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Somebody say war. Uh, can you say war a little louder than that? Okay, war. Okay, that means whether you like it or not, you're in the, you're at war. <laughs> okay, you're at war. There's no neutral ground. The day you become a believer, I got good news for you, you're at war. Amen. No neutral. That's why the, the, the apostle Paul says, a, civ a soldier does not meddle with civilian matters. You're a, you're a soldier. So actually speaking, you should not be, and I should not be meddling with civilian matters. No. That's not our take. That's not our deal. Our deal, the Bible tells us, is to war. And that's my calling. What's my calling? I want to be a prophet, praise God. But you're at war. You're a worship leader, you're at war. Uh, you're a preacher like me, you're at war. And I can tell you a hundred stories. As every time I preach here, something is happening somewhere else. Alright, but that should not deter you. Why? I've read the movie, I've seen the movie backwards. I know who wins. Amen. And I'm on the winning side. Somebody say amen. I'm on the winning side. Hallelujah. It's only when I do not know the outcome, I say, oh my goodness, should I do this? Rather be an ordinary Christian, come to Sunday service and get home, you know. But even then you're at war, my brother. And let me give you another spiritual insight. Every time you are quiet in the spiritual realm, quiet, without responding, you're saying yes. Silence means consent. In the spiritual realm. When the devil comes against you, if you're quiet, it means yes. The problem with us is we've been too quiet. I hope I can raise some righteous indignation here. That you'll be angry with the devil. Don't be angry with people. Be really angry with the devil because the, he's the cause of all sickness, all disease, all problems. And if you can get mad with him and get sick of being sick, get tired of being tired, I think we'll get some victory in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Verse number 4, please. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. Now, not only are we, we in war, but the Bible says in verse 4, let's read it together at the count of 3. 1, 2, 3, let's go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. So not only are you at war, our God is a good God because He has given you weapons. It's wrong to send a soldier to the war front without an ammunition, without guns and without battle instruments. Am I making sense to you? Can't go in without nothing. So the Lord has given you weapons. Oh, praise the Lord. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What is carnal? Fleshly. Alright. Another translation says, what you see. What is carnal? Okay, the, the actual Greek word is S-A-K-I-K-O-S or something like that, alright? But the meaning, I'll give you the meaning. It says temporal, carnal, fleshly, bodily, what you can see. So what does a carnal Christian do? A carnal Christian walks by what he sees. He doesn't walk by what he believes, he walks by what he sees. Rather, for a carnal Christian, seeing is believing. But for a spiritual Christian, or rather a spiritual man, believing is seeing. There's a big difference. Okay, a carnal Christian can rejoice and praise God only when he sees the check in the mail. But a, a person who's spiritual can praise God for God being the Jehovah Jireh, even when his bank balance is on the red. Am I making sense to you? A carnal Christian must see the good report on the doctor's you know, report there for him to say hallelujah. But a spiritual man 
will say hallelujah all through as he's going to the doctor. Am I making sense to you? Oh yeah, 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 that's true. It is real. My brother, there's no option. This is the fact. This is the truth. This is scripture. Will you say amen to that? Mm. Otherwise you believe and believe the doctor, good. Doctors, praise God for doctors. Doctors keep us alive. Thank God for them. They give you the medicines to till you get your faith really, really high. Praise God for the doctors. I really want to say thank God to them. <coughs> okay. Don't despise doctors. They are good. Right. Luke was a physician. So I read for Luke. All right. Just in case you think I'm against medication. No. Take all the medicines and live long and bust the devil. All right. <laughs> praise God. Right. Let me give you another scripture. Let's go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 18. Now from this point onwards, I want to prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that anything we do in our world, in system, has got spiritual roots. Alright? Everything has got spiritual roots. The, the, the roots is spiritual. We spoke about the root and the shoot, right? So the things that we are facing is got spiritual roots. I'll explain how it is to you. All right. You know the story. I'm not getting into the story. The story, the, the, book, the book of 1 Kings 18, 20. We're talking about Elijah. Okay, Elijah. And we all know the story of how he defeated the Baal prophets in the Mount Carmel. And if you have a heading on your Bible, it says Elijah on Mount Carmel or the victory over Baal or whatever not. Uh, so that's the story. Now, verse 21. Okay. Now, this is also a prophetic two-dimensional message because it's not only applicable to the people of God at that time, but I think it's applicable for us even today. Today. Let me know what is the question. Verse 21. And Elijah came to the people and he said, How long will you falter between two opinions? The problem today is we are faltering between two opinions. We don't know whether this is right or we do not know whether this is right. We stand and wonder, oh God, show me your way. Show me the direction. I'm here to tell you, God by his spirit has shown you the direction pretty clearly. The problem is we're not listening. Am I making sense? Am I making sense to you? Your yes is very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making sense, right? Now, because to me, I understand <clears throat> every time I look at heaven and say, Lord, tell me what to do. The Lord seems to be saying, I've given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Everything. I've given you the word. I've given you my spirit. I've given you common sense, which is not too common these days, by the way. Yeah. So I've given you all these things for you to make, a, make up your mind. All right. I mean, it's all there. It's in the scripture. I mean, if you're... I always tell people, if you have followed the general will of God, the specific will of God is easy for you to understand. All of us want the intricacies. I should go tomorrow morning. I should be at this place. God to speak to me. But if we follow the general will of God, specific will is not a problem because we'll be able to understand. I was talking about Abraham the other day uh, in some other place. And you know, when the Lord called Abraham out of the Europe of the Chaldees, and he said, I'm going to make your blessing, I'm going to make your name great, and I'm going to be, make your father of nations. And at 100 years old, no child. All right? Then a child comes up, <coughs> excuse me, a child comes up, and a couple of chapters later, the same God who called him out of the Europe of the Chaldees says to him, I want you to sacrifice your son in that Mount Moriah, which I will show you. Am I making sense to you? Now imagine this. The man has been in touch with this God so often that when the word of God came to him to sacrifice his son, he never said, excuse me, I don't know who you are. You see, especially when the message contradicts the nature. Am I making sense to you? If God says, I'm going to bless you, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you know, because I, I know God is a blesser, but the message is contradicting the messenger. God is a blesser. That's what he promised Abraham to do. I will bless you. And so the message now, he says, take your son, the son you love, <clears throat> and go up to the mountain and sacrifice him. This message is contrary to the original message. But the man had such an, I know, a connection with God that he recognized the voice of God and he says, yes, Lord, here I am. Am I making sense to you? So it's not that God is not trying to speak up. You know, our problem is the message seems to be contrary. Peter, 
there's a there's, there's a wind and a storm and all kinds of things happening and the, and the bible says jesus walked towards the, the the boat and everybody shrieked and and said lord what's happening a ghost and and jesus says no it's me and what would peter do he said lord if it's you please let me you know step into the water i like that man right by the way the rest of them would have drowned anyway yeah okay makes no difference makes no difference just because he stepped out made him more safer than the rest of them but they thought they were safe why they didn't obey the voice of god but that's foolishness so the bible says he stepped out god putting me through a storm i thought my god is a good god but i always speak about this no time for this it's in my website <clears throat> no testimony without a test no testimony without a test okay you can listen to my this is a message on my website go ahead and see this is a great one and coming back to the story the problem is faltering between two opinions i can tell you that from my own life after coming to church you are pumped up your faith is hitting the highest levels in your faith meter you you understand right you can move the mountains you can shake the storms after the message <clears throat> but when you go home and that's when your wife says excuse me there are some bills waiting to be paid there's no other faster way to get your 100 to zero your faith will zoom goes down it's, oh lord i mean i've done all this and look at this i have the challenge i'm telling you it's a challenge all of us face the challenge right we believe in god we believe in god but the doctor says things are not working out the way you believe oh man what but listen to me today i am telling you in jesus name make up your mind today that you will be healed you will be delivered you will be set free and he will be your jehovah jireh make up your mind you can clap if you want no problem you're clapping to the word of god that's perfectly fine <clears throat> that's perfectly fine am i making sense to you so today's problem is is beautiful elijah so but i want to ask the most the most important point here is is not only this but the but the the centrality of the message is that it's called spiritual roots all right so <clears throat> excuse me let's quickly go down to a couple of uh, verses and uh, okay verse number 28 this is the baal worshipers now okay they cried aloud and cut themselves as was their custom watch that word as was their custom that was a habitual thing to cut themselves with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them now what were they doing <clears throat> they were not they were not operating in a natural realm they were they were invoking spirits all right and by the way we all know baal is a spirit it's a demonic spirit all right now watch this the blood gushed out i remember when i was studying in school <clears throat> you know when i used to my lunch break i just used to walk around you know out of the school and on the roadside back in chennai i went to have these small stalls selling all kinds of stuff and there was one particular area which always caught my attention so i would always go and sneak and just look at what's happening there was a small boy okay who was covered with a sheet and you know he's on the floor and there was a senior man uh, who used to kind of ask him questions as an okay uh, what is the time uh, in this brother's wristwatch so this guy would say 120 or whatever you look at the time it's 120 okay i thought maybe you know everybody knows the time no big deal but he would ask questions like do you know what is in, in this, this brother's pocket he would say it's an id card uh, he would say it's it's a 25 rupee money there whatever and so it would it used to be right so he, they would check and they say it was right and i was very excited i said whoa i haven't seen that happening in church <laughs> it's happening on the road side you know <clears throat> so i was very intrigued by the whole thing but then i realized that certain times this answer you know that the answer wouldn't really come okay the the answer will not come uh, he will ask a question no answer this guy goes no answer what he used to do is he used to take a, a a razor blade and cut himself all right on his thigh cut himself very subtly and then the answer would come and i always wondered what is he up to why is he doing this right very subtly he would cut himself and when he, and it's it's a demonic thing it's a demonic thing it's a demonic thing 
and all of you playing the Oiji boards, Oija boards, whatever you call those boards, is demonic. Am I making sense to you? I was talking yesterday in this youth meeting about there's some a game called Blue Whale Game. Heard of the Blue Whale Game? Anybody heard of the Blue Whale Game? You do? Okay, one person, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, two people, brother, okay. Blue Whale Game, a game, you, it's an online game. You get into the game. So the admin gives you uh, challenges. So the first challenge would be something like, wake up wee hours in the morning. Okay. We wake up wee hours in the morning again and watch a horror movie. Okay, no big deal. Let's work on this challenge. Then a couple of days later, a challenge is to draw a whale, a symbol of the whale on your hand, cut it with a knife. And so it's bleeding there. Uh, okay, challenge, okay. On the 50th day, the challenge is to take your life. Is to commit suicide. And successfully, it's about 130 people have committed suicide so far. The game has originated in Russia. Yep. And recently in our Indian newspaper, uh, there was an article about how one person uh, could have been a victim of this blue whale game. Demonic. And we think it's one level. It's demonic. So everything that we do in life has got a spiritual root. Young people here, music you hear. Some of us think, you know, I'm only listening to the music, not the words. But both can get in together at the same time. Your brain can function just like that. It can't decode between music and words. Both get inside. People have committed suicide listening to songs. People have killed their parents listening to songs. People have done weird things listening to songs. Video games, demonic. There are certain things which are demonic. Sorry to stamp your toes, but I'm sorry it's in the way too. So yesterday I was sharing about all these things which we think is, ah, I'm just playing a game. It's not just a game. It's a demonic activity that the devil is using to destroy you and your life. There's a statistics which proves that 50% of the earth's population is under 30 years of age. And if he can get you, he's got the world. And that's why people like me, isolated voices, cry out here and there to see how much we can salvage and talk truth in spite of people getting angry with us. Especially young people. Many people don't like what I do because I'm straight away telling them, don't do this. Don't have illicit sex because it's demonic. Oh, I'm just having a great time. No, it'll kill you. Am I making sense to you? These are all embedded in demonology. And here the Bible says they cut themselves as was their custom. That means that dude, every faithfully, the ritual was to bow down to Baal and cut themselves as blood came out. Why you do that? It's invoking the evil one. Let me just keep going, okay? Okay, let me go to the next portion of scripture. Uh, to, let's please go to the book of First Samuel, chapter 17. Oh, praise the Lord. Will you say praise the Lord? Okay. Becoming too silent in this place. <laughs> right. First Samuel 17. Well, again, you know the story. I'm not getting to the story by itself. Because the story is about David and Goliath. If he, if he did not know 1 Samuel 17, uh, Sunday school, we have been taught about David and Goliath. Verse 1. The Philistines gathered their armies together to battle. The devil has got a battle plan for you. Mm. The devil has got a battle plan against you, against your family. Because the Philistines refer to not of God. It's the enemy. All right. And though it was a physical story, please look into the next dimension of it. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sukkot, which belongs to Judah. Verse number two. And, and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together as they encamped in the valley of Elah. Okay. Let's go to verse three. Now watch this. The Philistine, who's a representative of the evil one, he stood on a mountain on one side. And Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. All right, watch it. Verse 4. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath. What was his height? What is six, six cubits and a span? Close to nine feet plus. Close to nine feet. The guy was a massive giant, huh? nine feet plus. All right. So let's not go into all, all the details. Now let's go to verse number 8. And he stood and he cried out to the armies of Israel. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Now, the enemy, 
wants to destroy you and destroy me. All right? Not a good, not too good news, right? But I already told you you're at war. <laughs> so when you have a war, obviously there's an enemy. He wants to destroy us somehow or the other that we'll be paralyzed in what we do. We'll be discouraged. And one of the strategies that are many, one of the strategies is to let us know that our battle is not with, with, with the spiritual realm, but rather in the, in the natural. So what do we do? If you have a financial problem, the first thing we do is go and borrow more money. You, you understand? Uh, you understand? You know what we do? This is what we do on the general. I, because I'm telling you what I did, okay? It's not you. You're all, all nice people. I, I'm telling you about my story. <laughs> Seriously. I did a stupid thing. I know. We wanted to get a vehicle many years back. We wanted to get a vehicle, a car, okay? And uh, my brother brought a car and I was uh, going, so we were, my wife and I married. Uh, we were going around town like, like a circus advertisement. What I mean by circus advertisement? As my wife and I with a guitar stuck between us, uh, you know, and going on the bike, okay? And with one child in front, it was a drama. So I said, we need to get a car. And so we went and borrowed money uh, from a certain place, right? And the, if I look at the interest, it is crazy. If I had borrowed one, uh, two lakhs, two lakhs is 200,000. If I borrowed two, I'm just giving you an amount. I, I, I got only 1.4 at hand. 60 went straight away for the interest. See, this is called stupidity. It's called dumb, being dumb. All right, I, I'm a good example of being dumb. All right, <clears throat> so spiritually, if my eyes were open, I would have told myself, Lord, you are a God of good things. You will give me a vehicle at the due time. Correct, because he knows what I'm going through, right? I mean, he's my Lord, he's my master. But what does natural things tell me? I need the car now. Nothing wrong in having a car, but my problem was, how did I get the car? Went and borrowed money. And I borrowed this money from this particular place. And you know, I straight away said, one, two lakhs value, paper two lakhs, borrowed two lakhs, signed, returned back two lakhs. What I got in hand, 1.4, 60 gone, straight away, dumb. And so with this money, I'm trying to buy a car. So I told everybody, 1.4, man, you get a car, let me, hey, just yesterday, yesterday, we had a car for 1.4. Good one, missed it, 1.4. Ah, okay. So what happened is, next week comes, uh, they said, there's 1.5, no, 1.5, no money. 1.5, no, 1.4, yes. As time went by, there was some expense, the 1.4 became 1.3. Because, you know, that money goes for something else. By the time it came to a certain time, uh, it was 1. No car, I got 1. And now the Lord, this is, this, is, this is the Lord, okay? This is the Lord. And I tell you, Lord, sometimes you wonder what to do with this Lord, you know? He's talking. He said, give that one like away. I said, he must be, like Abraham. I said, this, this must not be God really, you know? How can the Lord do this to me? It must be the voice of an angel. As the Bible says, the angel of light. As the Bible says, portraying as the angel of light. Maybe not the real one, you know? Nobody would want me to give that money away. Man, I need to pay for the next three years. You must be joking with me. So I didn't say nothing about it to no, nobody. Next day, my wife came. She said, I'm going to tell you something you won't like. I said, did the Lord say anything about money? He said, exactly, yes. Give it away. And really, I had to give away that one lakh. I had to pay three years for the dumb mistake I made. Three years. And long story short, I got an income. At the time, I was still working for the airline company and every single person at one point were being terminated. I'm talking about, I mean, we've been terminating many people, okay? But at one stage, <laughs> at that one particular stage, a group of them were terminated. And, uh, you know, they left. I was preserved. I said, praise the Lord. And then uh, the, the, the company called and said, we have an envelope for you. I said, my God, maybe full-time ministry is calling <laughs> because this is my time to go. But when I went, they gave me an envelope, opened the envelope. It was a 60% salary increase. 60%. And I bought my car. I mean, with the money, excess money and all that back wages, I was able to pay the deposit for the new vehicle, a new car. And every month extra was the down payment for the car. So practically it came by the grace of God. You know what I'm talking about? This is spiritual life. This is, this is what I talk about when we're talking about natural things and spiritual things. When we talk about spiritual things, we always talk about something, you know, heaven open, angel come down right into your living room and shake you up. And No, being spiritual is being sensitive to, to God. That's all it means. 
If an angel comes to you, God bless you. Perfectly fine. But we are always looking for out of body experiences. That will happen one day. No worry. Okay. The day will come. <laughs> you can't escape that out of the body experience. Great. Your perks will literally be out of the world. Amen. Story of David and Goliath. Spiritual story. I know all Sunday school, they've taught us about Sunday school, David and Goliath so many times, but I want to let you know it's a spiritual story. The Bible says, okay, in verse 8, He stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come to line up for battle? All right. I am, am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Look at the challenge on your system. There's a challenge on your belief system. The devil seems to be saying, you know who I am? And you are, you are followers of Christ. Let's, let's take this out, man. Let's, take, let's prove to the world we are, who's the Lord, who's the master. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, this is it. I pray that you will understand this is the voice of the enemy. He says, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Will you say amen? Hallelujah. This is a two or rather three dimensional story. Man sinned against God in the garden of Eden. There was not a man to recompense. But thank God one man stepped from the portals of heaven and entered earth in the form of the son of God, Jesus Christ. So every accusation which man couldn't bear up, Jesus bore on himself because he was a perfect son of God. Went up a cross, died for you and me, shed his precious blood. And somebody thought the devils were having a party that night saying that, oh, we have crucified the Lord of glory. And as a matter of fact, they were having a party. Because they thought they got the God of glory. They killed the man. But as they were having the party, there was a knock on the door. The imp opened the door and found the king of glory step right in. Went into the underworld and beat the devil in his own house. And rose again victorious from the grave. Grabbed the keys of hell, the grave and rose victoriously from the grave. Forever to be with the Lord. Somebody say amen. Seated at the right hand side of God the Father and says to you and me, I have given you authority and power. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Am I making some sense this morning to you? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm preaching myself happy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is good news, my brother. Good news. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Give me a man. There's a man already sent to you. Okay. There's a man. Now you don't have to go. You don't have to fight. You just need to follow the man. The man, Christ Jesus. The man was sent. Give me a man. That's why the devil now has got no power. Jesus said in Matthew 28, I quoted this earlier, that all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Am I right? If Jesus has all authority, how much authority has the devil? None. Somebody say none. If all is given to Christ, how much authority has the devil? None. And so this 100% authority of Christ has been given to the church. Given to me. Am I making sense? Am I making sense or not? Your yes should be much louder because I'm giving you good news. <laughs> Amen. See, if you have something like this inside you, I mean, it shouldn't keep you quiet like this, right? It sh you should get excited because, my God, are you trying to tell me that the GST will not bother me? Exactly right. Are you trying to tell me that the doctor's report is not going to affect me? I am right. You are right in telling, in saying I'm right. You're right. Both of us can't be wrong, right? I'm right. Because I'm just telling you what the Bible is saying. I'm also from the same planet. I also have the GST to pay. I also have the doctor's reports in front of me. I also have bills to pay. But I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus, when you speak like this, half the victory is won. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Half the victory is won when you speak like this. Everything starts by speaking. You just speak. You know, your mind doesn't align with your speaking. Speak it out. In the secular world, they teach you, fake it till you make it. And that's the world. If you're a sad, smile. And then you'll be fine. Hey, if that's so true with the natural thing, I'm here to tell you, speak the word of God. 
over your life, over your situation, over your circumstance, and the thing will turn around. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When, when Saul and all the Israel heard these words, verse 11, uh, words of the Philistine, the enemy's voice, <laughs> they were dismayed and greatly afraid. This is the problem. This is the problem. Do you, you, are, you, are you getting me? This is the problem. That we get dismayed. When the world throws challenges against you and against me, we get dismayed. Oh God. You know, I, I see people in the ministry many times, right? Because we are in the ministry. I served you for 20 years and see what I get. It's a wrong word to come out from a Christian. It's a wrong thing to say. I mean, people say all kinds of things. Complain God. Look at heaven and complain. I'm here to tell you that God has given you the understanding that you have the power over these circumstances. Let, let, let me go on. Let me go on. All right. <coughs> Let's talk about David. David comes with a lunch bag uh, to be given to his brothers. Verse 20. Or rather, let's read from verse 24. Okay, verse 24. And the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. This is not one time happening. Every day. Every day. Being tormented of the devil. Am I making sense to you? See, the only time the devil can mess with your life every day is because of two reasons. First reason, if you do not know who you are. Second thing, if there's sin. Because he can come rightfully and mess with you. Am I making sense? But if you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the only other way we eliminate is, is to know the word and the word will set you free. You shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Am I making sense to you? Boldness comes because of the word. You know, that's when you can speak the way you speak. All right. Let me jump straight. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like this. Verse 25. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come to defy Israel and it shall be that I'm, that." Uh, be the man who kills the king uh, kills him the king will enrich with great riches now i want to let you know there's a great reward in winning over the devil great reward in this case great riches give him his daughter and give the father's house exemption from taxes in israel i think you should all beat the devil at least for the tax sake <laughs> based on the scripture you know praise god and so let me quickly run to the right verse, okay? Because of time, I just need to rush. Okay. Verse 34. So they brought him to Saul because Saul has to approve. And so, verse 34. And David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when, when it arose, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. What was the graduation there? Lion. Lion experience. Bear experience. And then Goliath. Amen. If your faith is shaking in small things, how will you face Goliath? You understand? If we can't believe God for a small thing, how are we going to believe God for a big thing? We wait for great faith to show up one day that we can believe God for mountains to move. But if you can't move a pebble, forget the mountain. Am I making sense? Get speaking to the lion. Get speaking to the bear. And then God will graduate you to the Goliath. Amen. So, and number two, his testimony. The devil is no... He said, Goliath is no match. Why? Because I've taken care of the, the, the bear and the lion. So this guy is not a big deal. You understand that? All right. So verse 35. I went out after it and struck it. That's why I mentioned to you very early that in the Christian circle or in the spiritual realm, if you don't attack it, it will attack you and kill you. Okay. Listen very carefully. Christian life is not defensive. Christian life is offensive. You know, in a, in a boxing match, two ways. One, just defend, you know, the punches coming from the enemy, you, you defend yourself. That's one area. 
You're not hurt, but you're defending yourself. But there's another realm. You go and punch. You understand? You're on the offensive, not on the defensive. I went out after it and struck it. I like that. Amen. I hope somebody gets a little violent today <laughs> with the devil out of the service is over. All right. And delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I, and what happens after, after striking it, the thing arose. So the devil is going to come and show up over and over again. Hmm. I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. I like it. Amen. I like the killing part. Don't see it's like a Korean drama. Okay. Don't leave the, don't leave the enemy half dead before you kiss the girlfriend. Kill fully and then kiss the girlfriend. Otherwise, you know, when you half leave the fellow, that fellow is already there trying to hold on to you. You, you understand? Kill the fellow. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Praise God. <clears throat> and the Bible says in verse number 36, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And the uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Now listen to me, please. You have to compare the devil to trash. Learn to define the devil's works as trash. Because some of us have great faith in the devil than God. How do I know that? Because anything goes wrong. Oh, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. You know, my car is stalled on the way. It's the devil. Great faith in the devil. Am <laughs> I making sense to you? Redefine the thing. Redefine your words. I, I preached a message about there is some oil. I preached a message like this talking about the woman, a widow woman who had nothing but uh, some stuff at home, a little oil, a little flour. She says, I'm going to eat this and die. What a way to die. Okay, I'm going to consume and die. And, uh, she, and, and the prophet asked this woman, what do you have in the house? What did she say? Any idea? What did she say? Ah, I have a little oil, but you know what exactly she said? I have nothing but a little oil. How does she start a sentence? I have nothing, but how do you phrase and rephrase your words is vitally important. She could have said, I have a little oil and flour and nothing else. Perfect. I have nothing. And then she says, see, the way you see life is very important. Oh, praise God, man. Verse 37. And moreover, David said, now listen to me. I want you to see this very seriously because David does so much of speaking and very less action. His action, whatever he did, was only two sentences. Picked the stone, slung it, and it went right into the head of the giant. That's all. The action part in the whole ch chapter is only two lines. But his speaking is 25, 30, 30 times more than his action. So that means your victory is based on what you say before what you do. Look at his rehearsing. He went before king and he said, this is what my God can do. He rehearsed his experience. God is a good God. That's what he said. And the Bible says, verse 37, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me. He, he, he never said, I hope God will show up. <laughs> I'm staking my life because of God. I'm standing in the forefront. I heard one, somebody say like this and I was, I, I didn't want to come to the ministry. Actually, I was growing up and when I met this man, uh, he said, you know what? He was telling the, uh, the group of people there, you know, everything the devil wants to do for you against you is turned on to me. And I said to myself, no ministry. I am very happy being a praise the Lord Christian. Last row in, last row out. Why should I be a Christian and get the devil into my case? I'd rather be, a, but that's not true. The devil comes, but we win. That's the thing. The keys we win. We win always. That's what the Apostle Paul said. We are triumphant in Christ. What do you say? Sometime or always? Always or sometime? Or did he say most of the time? No. He said always. So that means in Christ, victory is always. It's only when I sidetrack and do crazy things that it's sometimes. You understand? There's no losing with God. All that, Psalm chapter 1, all that he does shall prosper. All. It kind of blew, blows my mind. I wish I can agree with our experiences. But then that's what the Bible does not say. It says everything that you do will prosper. I mean for us it's hit, 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 miss, miss, hit, miss, hit, hit. You know, that's, that's our life, right? But then if you look at the Psalm chapter 1, it says you're winning always. I'd rather believe the Bible than say amen to my own problems. 
Am I making sense to you? We need to align ourselves with God's word. Hmm. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He will deliver me. Assurance. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. I'm not, he never said God will show up. He said, I will. Anyway, get the garland ready. Get the wedding ready. Anyway, I'm getting it. The girl, the girlfriend is also a part of the package. Get her. That's exactly what he was saying. And the Bible says 38. This is the problem here. Whenever we challenge the system, there are people who want to put on a garb of religious righteousness on us to overshadow us and put us into a problem because we can't carry this burden of this religious spirit sitting on us. Now this is a different spirit now. All right. The one was the devil. The other spirit is a religious spirit. People, you know, people have told me, you, brother, you must be rational in your thinking. Rational. You can't be overboard. You cannot be overboard. Think rationally. See, see, you must understand. See, we are living in this world. You need to pay bills. Uh, uh, you, you want to get off this job and uh, get into ministry. Uh, you see, you must think, if it's a bachelor, if you're a bachelor, it's okay. But you got a family. It won't look nice if you let the family down. You, you know what I'm talking about. It looks very good. Am I making sense to you at all? So there is a certain amount of spiritual insanity you must operate by. When you start terming things differently, when, huh, when Abraham took his son up there to that mountain, he told his servants, two of them rather, he says, what did, they, what did he say? Uh, wait here, I and my, what are we going to do? We're going to worship and come back. Okay, if you want definition of worship, go there. Okay, that's definition of worship, to give God what he wanted. Anyway, we will come back. That's what he said. He defined the faith. He spoke the faith out. Hmm. So, the Bible tells me, Saul clothed David with his armor. No, 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 that's the wrong, the wrong thing. That's Saul's armor. It doesn't fit you. God has got a race that is set before you. You're not running somebody else's race. The race that is set before you. Looking unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hmm. So Saul clothed David with his armor, put a bronze helmet on his head and also clothed him with a coat of mail. Bible tells me in verse 40, in 39, the last line, David took them off. Praise the Lord. That's some guts you need. To shake off every religious demon. And walk straight to what God has called you. It may be maddening. It may be stupid to the world. But if God has called you with a word in your mouth. Speak it. Amen. Whether it, is, it may be radical to the world. But you speak it. It will happen. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I mean they spoke the craziest words ever. They said I don't care what you do. If God shows up fine. He doesn't show up still okay. I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Radical words. Verse 40. <coughs> Then he took a, took a staff in his hand. He chose for himself five smooth stones. Why five? Why five? One is enough, right? Five? Why five? Hmm? <laughs> Sorry? Why five? Why five? This guy Goliath had other four brothers. Maybe for them. <laughs> four more brothers. Maybe once Goliath is finished off, the next, you know, <laughs> the brothers. <laughs> he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. Put them in a shepherd's bag, a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. I like this. He drew near to the Philistine. As always, the Philistine drew near to the people of God, but this time the boy changed the whole pattern. He says, devil, you've been messing with me too long. You've been frightening me too often. Every month you're giving me panic attacks. But today I'm going to change my circumstance, change my situation. I'm going to run to you. Am I making sense? I hope some of us will get something, something inside you and you will run to your problem, not run away from your problem. And the Bible says, and when the Philistines saw, and verse 42, looked about and saw David, he disdained him or said, hey, you, you coming? Hmm. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. I like it. Please, if you're a good looking, God bless you. Ready to face a giant. <laughs> All of you are good looking. Praise the Lord. And so the Philistines said to David, Am I a dog? This guy confused. You see? When you go against the enemy in the way you're going, the enemy doesn't even know what he's saying. He's asking, Do you think I'm a dog? 
See, the plan is to confuse the enemy. The enemy is saying, am I a dog? David did not say he's a dog. But he said, I'm a dog. You know, when you attack the devil, the devil gets confused. You know, <laughs> praise the Lord, you know. I always talk about this. You have to terrorize the devil. Terrorize the devil. Why? Go against him. He does not know what to do. Because he's so used to the children of God clapping and praying in a corner. Oh God, do something. When God says, I've already done something. Oh Lord, please move. The Lord says, I've already moved. I've sent my son from heaven to earth. Already moved. Lord, send the Holy Ghost. I've already done that in Acts chapter 2. It's all up to you to get going. And we're still looking and waiting. God says, go. Revival, revival. We're only praying revival. I want to tell you, you are the revival. If you move, revival will take place. If you sit quietly, no revival is going to happen. It's simple as that. Am I making sense? Oh, yeah. And the Bible says, verse 43. So the Philistine said to David, I am a dog. Mentally messed up. And you mess up the devil. And you come to me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. You know what I'm talking about. I was talking to you about the spiritual battle that you're facing. The Bible says, and he came by his gods, small g. And the Philistine said to David, come to me. I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, you come with me with a sword, with a spear, with a javelin. But I love this. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Am I telling you something which is blessing you this morning? Listen to me, please. When you stand in the name of the Lord, the armies back you up. Am I making sense today? You know, you're not alone. Some of us think we're all alone. No, the armies of God are standing behind you because you're challenging the system which is defying the armies of the living God. Oh yes, praise God. And the Bible says, this, this day, not tomorrow, not day after tomorrow. One of the, listen to me, please listen to me. Uh, many of us have bought this trap of the, the devil. He, all is yours. Healing is yours. Blessing is yours. Goodness is yours. But wait for the New Year service. Why New Year service? That's when you repent and cry and all that. And new beginning. No, no. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for New Year. Am I making sense to you? Some of us are waiting for the future date. The day I will become better. The day I complete 40 years, 40 days fast. The day I attend these seminars. Oh my God, don't wait for those 40 days. Today is the day of salvation. Oh, praise God. And the Bible says this day, today, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. Listen to me. Before he executed what he was supposed to do, he planned his strategy. Am I making sense? Plan your strategy. How are you going to combat the devil? You know, I, let me tell you this as I, 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 I think I should do it right now. If there's a certain pattern happening at home, certain pattern regularly happening, there's something wrong. Please back up, look at the situation and say, now why is it happening like this? What is wrong? You know, something is constantly happening. I can tell you families of how people in that, you know, the, the men in that family at one particular age, they become mad. There's a fact. Every single age, age of 40, lost the head. The second brother, age of 40, lost his head. The fourth brother is 39. Now he's wondering, now I'm going to lose my head again. <laughs> you know, and he says, please pray. I know families where the fathers, three brothers, lose job. Second brother, lost his job. Third brother, lost his job. Their sons, they lost their job. Second son's son lost his job. What's happening? So when something is recurring, you need to take control, take, you know, think about it. Something is wrong. Amen. And break the thing because it's a demonic spirit which is trying to affect you and your family. Oh, yes. He planned his strategy. He planned his strategy. All right. Verse, let me quickly go to verse number 49. 49. Then David put his hand in his bag took out a stone. He slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank in his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Will you say amen? The devil bows at Jesus' name. The devil bows at Jesus' name because you have the name of God on your lips. He will bow and we have the victory. Will you say amen? Verse 15, David prevailed 
over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What was the weapon he had? A stone and a sling. We, all, we, should, we, should, we should technically be going there with machine guns and AK-47s. But that's not our weapon. Jericho was won, not with these weapons, but with praisers. So God's strategy, my brother, is not like the world's strategy. Totally different. All right? Understand the strategy of God. It may be for you, God may lead you to just fast and pray. For you, for some of you, the Lord just says, read my scriptures. For you, some, the Lord probably says, shut down and just relax. Take it easy. Do nothing. There was a man, I heard a story. A man was suffering from cancer. And then the doctor said, you're going to die. He says, okay, let me die laughing. He checked into a room, picked up some uh, cartoons of, you know, all this funny stuff with the, the comical stuff, uh, started playing it one by one. He said, might as well laugh and die. And so as he was laughing and dying, the Bible, I mean, the story tells me that he never died the day he was supposed to die. So he got himself more series to watch and laugh. He watched the three stooges. He watched Laurel and Hardy. I don't know whether he watched Tom and Jerry, whatever it may be. He laughed and laughed. He laughed his way to health. This is a truth. This is a story. This is a real true story. The true story. So I don't know what your strategy is, but if you get a strategy, work the thing out. Amen. And I know certain strategies which will work for me and I do it. Why? Because I see results in this thing. Oh, praise God. Let me just quickly close. Now David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew out it out of his, its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. Now, what the devil does not know, he, that he's got his own destruction at his hand. The devil doesn't know that. Okay, you don't have to worry about your weapons. He's got his own power to destroy himself. All you have to do is execute it. Am I making sense to you? Let the devil, let the devil die. Let his plans be thwarted in Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. The book of Luke chapter 13. <clears throat> Final words. Luke chapter 13. Before I give you the verse, let me just give you the quick uh, uh, background of this verse. Verse number, some verse number 10 onwards. I'm going to close with this. Okay. Verse 10 of Luke chapter, uh, chapter, verse 10 of Luke chapter 13. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Somebody say teaching. Somebody say louder teaching. That's the key to victory. God's word, understanding is the key to victory. And so as he was teaching in the Sabbath, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, was bent over, could no way raise herself up. I mean, she was, the Lord was teaching, the woman was a part of the service, but she was bent. The devil had managed to keep her bent for so many years. Instead of standing erect before a holy God, she had to be bent down looking at dust. That's not God's plan. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. All right. Let's jump to verse number 16. What Jesus said. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? Question mark. See, heaven is asking your question today. Heaven wants to know what your answer is. The question is, hey, you're a child of the Almighty God. Jesus died for you. You have power. Heaven says, what are you doing with your life bound by the devil? Do you want to get free? It seems to be that heaven is asking us a question today. I don't know what your response will be. The Bible says he touched her and he healed her and she stood straight for the very first time in 18 years and looked at the face of Jesus. All the while, 18 years looking at dust. And for the first time, stood straight, looked at the face of Jesus. Today, I pray you'll bend from whatever the devil has bound you with and look into the face of Jesus. And when you see his face, his glow will come upon you. His face will be lightened like his face, your face will be lightened. And you're going to walk from this place victorious. Will that be your prayer today? Just stand to our feet. I would pray. And probably a song and then I'm going to conclude. And if you need any kind of prayer, please come. We can pray. And by the way, as I said to you, please, if there's somebody who, check yourself as we are going to do this, okay? Check yourself. If, if somebody felt a relief, a release in your spirit that you say, brother, something has happened to me. If that's you, you know, just lift up your hand, okay? 
we want you to we want you to testify of what the lord has done okay first let's pray lift your hands to god hallelujah praise the name of the lord praise the name of the lord just the cattle would you like to help me in the keys a little bit yeah <clears throat> praise the name of the lord hallelujah somebody say hallelujah now that i want you to just take the moment of this time this time is precious this is a time where god wants to speak to you and you're wondering why what is the problem why is this why is this continual issue happening in my life i thought it was a one time affair but it's it's a constant affair it keeps happening over and over again why and today i answer your question to tell you that the battle that you're facing is not of natural origin it's of spiritual origin and the devil wants to paralyze you destroy you destroy me but i've come as the voice of god to let you know that we win over the schemes of the devil because the bible says there was a woman who was bent for 18 years and the lord willed that she should be fine he willed that she should walk up and run and enjoy herself simply because she is the daughter of abraham and today you're the daughter and the son of the almighty god being under oppression is not god's plan today if you would decide it's up to you really you need to recognize the root of the problem oh god is the root of my problem not reading the word as basic as that am i too busy in not being able to spend time with you Am I caught up with work? That this work, Lord, gives me a headache, and I have no time to seek Your face. Are you having the greatest of opportunities to take a break and just to relax, or are you running crazy? That's not God's plan for you, my brother, my sister. His plan for you is that you live well. And Jesus said to us that He has given us abundant life, Zoe life. And that life is to be experienced. But if, if you're if you're living a life which is so busy, I pray today will be a day of change. That you will begin to see in the spirit that those things which are actually be the origin of this problem. Look at the root of the problem, not the shoot of the problem. The root it has to be attacked in this day. And I want to lift your voices and lift your hands. and begin to open your mouth and speak to that root of the problem speak to the root of the problem I want you to be loud and clear because the bible says when jesus spoke to the fig tree his disciples heard him in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you for the power of your word that god those things which are holding us my brother my sister lord we speak against it in jesus name we curse that sickness in jesus name we curse that peaceless situation within those four walls in the name of jesus we curse the devil which is taking my child away from me i curse the devil and his works in jesus name the spouse is running loose i break that power over him i break that power over her in jesus name The devil is holding my finances. I break the power of poverty. I break the power of a poor mindset. I break the power of a negative thinking. I break the power of my enemies trying to overcome me. Somebody say I am a victor in Christ. I am a victor in Christ. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Akabaranamashanda Oh God I thank you as we stand today as your word has been preached I as the servant of the almighty God with the authority vested upon me I break the work of the devil over every person at the sound of my voice I break your power you dumb devil in the name of Jesus we speak victory we come against you we're not afraid of you no more we you are after us but today I'm going to turn against you. you i'm going to break your power in the name of jesus i declare myself blessed i declare myself good i declare that all things work
work well for me. All things work together for my good. For them who love God and are called according to His purpose, I speak a blessing on my family. I speak a blessing on my children. I speak a blessing over the work of my hands. I speak a blessing on my business. I speak a blessing over the things that I do. I speak a blessing in my workplace. I'm a blessing when I go out. I'm a blessing when I come in. I am a walking blessing. I am a walking miracle. Finances I attract in the mighty name of Jesus. I curse poverty. In the name of Jesus. Victory is mine. In the name of Jesus. I will proceed further. My enemies have been slain. My enemies have been destroyed. Somebody needs to open them out today and speak to the devil. Tell the devil with the authority God has given you, don't mess with me no more. The heavens armies back my words. I have power. I have the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. You cannot mess with me, devil. You may try to come against me, but I am powerful in Jesus' name. Because the scriptures say that Saul, the Bible says, could not handle you. But I am David, anointed of God. I am not a religious fanatic, but I'm a Holy Ghost filled Christian. I got the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. The words that I speak carry power. And when I come against you, I don't come with my weapons. I come with the weapons of God in my lips. The name of God is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it and are set on a high. I have the anointing upon my life. I break sickness. I break disease over my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to declare over your life that peace will be within my walls. Oh, yes. Lift your hands and say, I'm free. Declare your freedom. Declare your freedom. Say, I'm free. That's what David did. He declared his freedom even before he slung that stone. He says, devil, he said, I'm going to cut your head and I'm going to give it to the birds. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, praise God. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Clap to God. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the holy people. Praise the Lord with music instruments. Praise the Lord with drums. Praise the Lord with everything that you have. If you have some breath in your nostrils, open your mouth and praise the Lord. Because He's the only one who's worthy of praise. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. There is no one like Jesus. He's the fairest of the thousand. He's the Bishop of my soul. He's the bread of life. He's the living water. He's my God. He's my Lord. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Sitkenu. My God in Him will I I trust surely he shall keep me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence shall he preserve me oh angels encamp around me lest I dash my foot against a stone a thousand may fall a ten thousand may fall but it shall not come nigh thee blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord amen anybody got a testimony Anybody got a testimony? Anybody got a testimony? Okay. Anybody testimony? Please come and testify. Okay. Check yourself. I'm going to hand it back to my dear brother, brother Stephen, and uh, still got a testimony. Come and tell us, brother Stephen. Yes, God. Shoot it. Yes, God. 